let me start with, uh, with you, Jack. Uh, is the mic on? Yes? All right. The, uh, Jack, I know you've been passionate uh, about the need to... Something's going on here. Huh? Is it working? Okay. Uh, I know you've been passionate about the need to fight climate change. Um, I want to get a sense from you of why you think it's so important. Uh, I also want to get a sense of why you think it's so important that business has a role in this process. And I know that in addition to the work that you've been doing with nonprofits uh, recently, uh, you've also been in conversations with Bill Gates about the potential of uh, really turbocharging investment in research and development about, uh, around clean energy. And, and we may be able to make some announcements about yep. sort of this mission innovation in Paris. G give me a sense of, of how it looks to you from the vantage point of uh, one of the most successful and largest e-commerce uh, 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 organizations in history. Thank you, President. Well, it's not the passion, it's the concern and worry. I, uh, when I was 12 years old, I went to swim in a lake, and I was almost dying in that lake because the water was too deep, much deeper than I thought. But five years ago, I went to that lake again. There was, it's, the total lake was dry. A lot of people have a disease. And the second concern of the young colleagues died of cancer. 20 years ago, very few people have heard about the cancer of the world. But now, almost most of the families, my friends, they have a people of cancers. So if we've been working so hard, if we work so hard and put all the money in the hospital, buy medicine, it will be a disaster. Why we should working? So if without a healthy environment of this earth, no matter how much money you make, no matter how wonderful you are, you have a bad disaster. So it's the concern we have. So we started six years ago, put 0.3% of the money of, of the total Alibaba revenue on encouraging, enable all the young people to find creative ways to solve the problem. And I think the money is not always not enough. But the money we use try to wake up a people's consciousness, should know that the, the climate change problem, they should know, they should agree that the, uh, the water is a problem, the food is a problem. So that is what we, we think. And after we're doing that, we think, because what Alibaba believe is, where is the opportunity? The opportunity always lies the place where people worry. If you solve the worry problem, that's the greatest opportunity you have. So after five years, we find this is a huge chance so yeah, as you said two weeks ago, Bill Gates called me about inviting me to join the force together, uh, investing in the clean technology. I think it's a fantastic idea, and I, I, I think it took me and the company believe this is something that we can do the comp contribution. As you say, we are not a big company. Compared to 15 years ago, we are big. But compared to 15 years later, we are small. But if we do not care about this earth, we do not care about the water, food, the environment, I think nobody can survive, whether you're big or small. So this is the concern. This is the worry I have. Excellent. The, uh, now, you mentioned uh, the need for continuous innovation in this area. And that's why we have uh, Aisha here. And uh, you know, Jack remembers when he was starting a company. Uh, Aisha's sort of at that early stage. but. Uh, as an engineer by training, uh, you had an idea that uh, could both do well and do good. So tell us a little bit about uh, what your idea was. Tell us about SALT and uh, what lessons have you learned as a young entrepreneur in, in terms of making an impact? Okay, uh, so first of all, uh, let me take this opportunity to uh, express my deepest appreciation for allowing me to sit with you, Mr. President, Mr. Ma, to share our advocacy and mission with SALT and, of course, tackle on a uh, more um, serious matter like climate change. It's really, truly uh, a very, uh, an honor. So uh, uh, my brother and I uh, founded SALT, so it's uh, SALT, Sustainable Alternative Lighting. And our main advocacy is we wanted, to, uh, we wanted to address the light inequality gap first in the Philippines by focusing on the people at the bottom of the pyramid because it comprises of about 15 to 20 percent of the country's population. Now, most of these families live on island, 
island communities and they are not connected to power grids. So they mainly use kerosene and fuel-based lamps as the main source of lighting. And we know the, the danger that uh, kerosene lamps poses. It can cause fire accidents, it emits black carbon. So that's uh, the main reason why. Uh, what we want is we wanted to provide these people a lighting option that is more cost-effective, more safe, more uh, sustainable and environmentally friendly by a way of a lantern that uses saline solution or ocean water as a means to, a catalyst to generate electricity. In turn, it will be able to power up LED and uh, of course power up a USB port where you can also charge uh, low power mobile devices like your phones. Uh, very essential during uh, emergencies, especially disaster uh, scenarios. So that's uh, uh, how uh, we're trying to, uh, of course, um, contribute in terms of um, the climate change. We, 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 uh, we are starting with the lamp, and what we see, uh, the huge impact uh, that uh, we'll be able to contribute is uh, when we try or when we uh, uh, dive into developing like a large scale for, G, uh, for uh, the technology that we have. Just imagine if you'll be able to power up a whole island using the ocean water. So uh, our planet is, is composed of 70% salt water. So uh, that's what we're trying to aim for. Yes. That's great. So the... Uh, um, Uh, just to be clear, the, uh, I should, so with some salt water, uh, the device that you've set up uh, can provide, am I right, about eight hours of uh, yes, lighting? eight hours of lighting. And all you need to do is you just have to replenish the salt water solution, and then you'll have another eight hours of And the lamp is uh, $20, uh, roughly? Around $20. Around $20, and it, it will last you for? Uh, uh, there's a uh, consumable inside that you have to change every now and then. So the, the main explanation, the main science behind the lamp is uh, it's a chemical reaction. Right. You're trying to convert chemical reaction into energy. Right. So there's something inside that you have to change, but you only have to change that like six months if mm -hmm. you're using the lamp eight hours a day every day. And that only costs the consumable part around $3, $2, yeah. $3. So you're just going to uh, uh, sustain the lamp. You just have to spend like six dollars annually, and that's which means that you potentially uh, save even within a certain amount of time. You're already saving enough on kerosene to have paid for the lamp, and then from that four point forward, uh, basically, uh, you're getting a, a modest amount of but important amount of electricity yes. uh, that you can use for a wide variety of purposes. Yes. So it, it, I think uh, Aisha is a perfect example of what we're seeing in, uh, in a lot of countries, young entrepreneurs coming up with leapfrog technologies. In the same way that uh, in large part portions of, of uh, Asia and Africa, you know, the, the old landline phones never got set up. People just went straight to uh, mobile. And obviously, they're buying stuff through Alibaba all, on there all the time. Um, but but the, the, the point is, is that they did not have to make some of the massive infrastructure investments. Uh, this is part of the reason why the old idea of development and uh, environmental sustainability, I think, is outdated. Uh, it does raise the issue, though, of how we can do more to support young entrepreneurs like uh, Aisha. And Jack, you have the benefit of having been on both sides of the equation. Early entrepreneur, scratching and clawing to get things done, and then now, uh, obviously, a very successful businessman. Uh, how, how can both government and larger companies uh, uh, be uh, assisting in creating the kind of climate for innovation that uh, encourages young entrepreneurs like Aisha? Yeah, government is simple, just reduce the tax or no tax for these guys. <laughs> hey, uh, there you go. Well, yeah. ah. You got well, a lot of cheers from your fellow <laughs> CEOs. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, but I think um, I feel so you know, excited by hearing the story. Like, uh, startup 
for entrepreneurs like a baby. And I have five babies so far, experienced a father. Um, I Do you mean, love the them all equally, or is there? <laughs> Do you have some favorites? You I, shouldn't say I that. Do. I, I do. You know, Alibaba, Alipay, Taba, you know, these are, the, uh, these are the kids that I have. But one thing my advice, we just had a discussion at the back, back office that um, um, nobody can help you. We can only help ourselves. Investors, government, and partners, they are uncles and aunties. You are the father. You are the mother of the kid. Don't give up the kid. Because when we start up talking about our kid, our passion, it all sounds crazy, but you are the guy to take care of the kids. But what we do is that um, we, we are platform. Our job is to enable. We, we sold, we, you know, on the 11-11 day, we sold $14.5 billion, and this year we got like $500 billion sales totally on our platform. We do not sell anything. We empower other people to sell. So our platform is to empower the small business to realize their dreams. Company like that, um, we have a company that is, uh, they have an APP, helping trucks, because the truck logistic, they normally deliver things from this city to that city full of packs. When we come, come back, all empty. So the application is tried to making sure all the truck drivers can find the resources. So our technology and platform try to empower this company and last year alone, they saved 1.5 billion U.S. dollars fuel because mm -hmm. of the thing. So I think using the technology in innovative ways, it's, and all other things, big companies, it's difficult for big companies to keep the innovation keep on. The innovation is always outside your company. So for us, when, when we see companies like that, we're excited, we put the money inside, we're using technology, and we also promote them on our platform if they are environment friendly. Thanks. Yeah. Aisha, the, uh, uh, what have been the biggest challenge for you in terms of scaling up? You've got a technology, you, you feel confident that it can work. Uh, she's won, by the way, a lot of prizes and gotten a lot of attention, so uh, we, we, this is not like one of those infomercials where, <laughs> you know, you order it and the, you can't make the thing work. It's, uh, so, uh, so, but, but, but what, what have been the biggest cha challenges and, and how could both uh, uh, the public sector and the private sector be more helpful in terms of encouraging young, young entrepreneurs like you? Well, uh, based on our experience, I guess what we need uh, here uh, is like a support system because uh, we, have, we have the passion. So uh, if you don't mind me uh, telling you the backstory of how we started, uh, the main inspiration of coming up with the application, a lighting application, was when I did a, a personal immersion up in the mountains of Kalinga. So there I learned of a story that uh, because of um, scarcity of public transportation, people had to travel down the mountain and walk, walk six hours just to get kerosene for their lamps. And they do that every other day. So we have the passion. So what, what we need is like a support system, both from the private sector and the government, to um, like mentor us, guide us how we can scale up the, pro uh, the product or the project. And um, yes, we, we also need a lot of support in, ter in terms of funding. So that's where, uh, that's our main challenge right now. We're on a critical phase. We're trying to mass produce the lamp. So we're just looking for someone to fund us to uh, get the project moving. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just saying the... Uh, the so, so serving as a matchmaker here a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a couple of things. Uh, I, and I know we, we're running out of time, but I, I just want to comment on. First of all, uh, I do think that there's a role to play for government in providing tax incentives for the production of clean energy. Uh, what's been interesting, if you look at solar, for example, heavy subsidies on the front end, but because of the, uh, the trend lines in uh, uh, re reducing the costs per BTU coming out over the last several years, it, it's exceeded many of our expectations. 
and increasingly uh, the subsidies become less and less necessary. So early phase, yeah. you may need some support. Uh, over time, uh, less support. Uh, a, a second area, Jack, where I do think that the government has an important role to play, and I, I think you wouldn't disagree with this, is on basic research and development. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, most of your businesses, uh, the people in this audience, uh, you have an R&D budget, but oftentimes it's commercializing a technology that's relatively proven, tweaking it, uh, where governments can do what it's hard for companies to do, is to that front-end basic research that doesn't have necessarily a, an immediate payoff, but will then serve as the laboratories for young people like Aisha to discover Based on that basic research, I've got a new idea and I can do something else. And that's, in fact, how the Internet came about in part, was uh, you know, a, a combination of incredible innovation, uh, but also some basic uh, government funding that had come in on the front end. Uh, but the, the, the thing that I, I maybe want to ask you, Jack, uh, sort of in, in, in closing, is uh, whether you think that other businesses that you're interacting with and dealing with, uh, particularly in the APAC countries, feel the same urgency that you do? Or do you think that you're still an early evangelist for this and you have to persuade others uh, a little bit more? Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because uh, I think it's in, China's an interesting example. Like the earlier uh, patterns of England or the United States, when a country is growing rapidly, it doesn't pay a lot of attention to the environment. Uh, as it enters into sort of middle income status, suddenly people start looking at cancer rates, they start looking at the air, uh, the water, and you become more conscious and, uh, that that's a, a good, a value that we have to price and, and, uh, uh, and, and care about. Uh, and I'm wondering whether you think your fellow business leaders are seeing that, that same kind of transition and opportunity uh, in this region. Yeah, I, I think I take a China, for example, I think today because of the air in Beijing, the smoggy, it cost attention and, and, and government and all the business changed a lot in the past four years. I just came back from Beijing four weeks ago. My throat was pain. And I think we organized called a Paradise uh, Foundation. I, we invited a 45, I invited 45 business leaders in China, all joined, all put the money inside. Mm -hmm. And we think that there are a lot of things business should do. It's too late to complain who's fault. Whether your fault or my fault, let's solve the problem together. It's the combination where combine the work of government, private sectors, scientists, and, and the sociologists and philanthropists. We have to work in together. So I think the, the thing is that how we can work in a way more efficiently. I believe always you should have a philanthropic heart inside, but business away, because you have to get the things down. That is why scientists tell us how to do properly. Business should tell us how to get things down efficiently, and government should have the good environment and, 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 and foundations of researching. Uh, and also we need a lot of media guys to, to tell people how, how we do it. But I think the, this area, Asia Pacific, especially China, we are taking good actions, but we need to do in a way that is really workable. I bought a big piece of land in Brandon, at Rodank in the States, in the forest. The reason I bought it is not for buying the forest. The reason I bought it is by the experience of how America solved the problem in the last century of the 30s. How they solved the problem there. Will bring the technology, bring the know-how back to China, back to this part of the world. I think it's the opportunity, sure. and it's 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 too late to worry. We have to make action, join together. This is what we believe. Excellent, excellent. And and Aisha, the uh, uh, closing comments. I mean, obviously, you're you're about to scale up, and I'm we're confident that uh, you'll be successful, uh, but. Uh, one of the most important things that you've said, uh, in my mind at least, is that this starts from the bottom up. That uh, when, when, whether it's in the Philippines or in Tanzania or anywhere in the, in the world, 
that uh, people who are trying to improve their lives, uh, that they can't be asked to just stay poor in order to solve this problem. They need electricity, they want transportation, they want uh, the same things that exist in developing nations. Uh, but what that means is, is that if we're working at that grassroots level, seeing what folks need and figuring out in an efficient way how to deliver improved quality of life uh, while being environmentally sustainable, uh, that's an enormous opportunity. And, and, uh, uh, but, it, but it starts at, at, at looking at the aspirations and hopes of, of uh, ordinary people. Is, is that a, a fair thing yeah. to say? Yes. Uh, it's uh, mainly a collaborative effort. You should, uh, uh, you should not just um, like, uh, rely on the government. Uh, of course, uh, you should also do your part, uh, both as a citizen of the nation, uh, to help your people. So like what we're doing, we're, uh, I'm, I'm focusing on what I'm good at, which is, um, of course, R&D, research and development. And we just entered, uh, uh, with the help of um, local incubation uh, program here in the Philippines, we were able to um, partner with a local manufacturing company who's trying to help us assemble the lamp. And we're also in talks. We, have, uh, we are getting uh, so many support from organizations and foundations to dis distribute the lamps. Uh, across the Philippines, so uh, uh, with all those, uh, it's a, it's a collab collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. So you have to, um, of course, be open with regards to part partnering and um, helping out uh, people, especially uh, in our case, people that don't have access to electricity. Uh, uh, electric electricity is a basic need, and we should light is a basic need, and we should uh, be addressing that. And um, uh, uh, before I, uh, uh, of course, um, before I uh, close, uh, before I get my, uh, to my closing remark, I would like to focus on, the, on climate change coming from an academic background. So uh, I, I just wanted to emphasize that uh, climate change is real. So it's a fact. It's not a myth that uh, scientists created in order to get funding or grants. <laughs> so it's real. So it's happening now. Just to give you like a simple analogy of uh, what stage we are in in climate change right now. It's like climate change is like cancer. So at stage one, uh, your, your cell starts mutating. And then at stage two, you start feeling the symptoms. If you're self-aware, you go to the doctor and uh, get, get treatment. If you're not aware, of course, you take it for granted. And then you go on to stage three. You start feeling the, the severe effects of the symptoms until finally stage four, you're noticing that your health starts declining. You get, to the, you get the best oncologist, pay the best hospital. But it's not working because everything is too late. Right. So climate change is like that. So right now, I believe so, we are on stage two. So it's, it's we're on stage two, so. I'm just right. saying, people. It's, <laughs> you don't want to, <laughs> you don't, you don't want to uh, get to stage four. Uh, and, yes, and we don't want to get, and, and, get and to And we all have a huge investment uh, in, in making sure that our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren are able to uh, enjoy prosperity. And it's, that's dependent ultimately on a planet that uh, accommodates us. Uh, I will say that you, the, the lamp you talked about, in addition to providing light, uh, you can also uh, charge, charge a cell phone, phone, right? Yes. And if, you, if, you're, if people have these lamps, they're more likely to charge their cell phone, which means they're more likely to use e-commerce yes. yeah. and more likely to purchase things <laughs> through we'll Alibaba. Sell it online. So I think that there's a synergy here. Everybody, please give uh, Jack and Aisha a big round of applause. That concludes this session.